Hi, I'm Kazra on HG Fields and I am a fine artist. I work digitally, primarily. Um, and yeah, recently I've been working with AI to build my uh, pieces for texture and that sort of thing. Basically, I've been throwing in like phrases I enjoy or, or lyrics and I'll just put them into this program and it will generate an image based on that. Then from there, I will build, I'll um, copy, paste, you know, uh, do mirror images, stretch, all kinds of things. And uh, from there, yeah, just keep building texture and that kind of thing, like you would with traditional um, collage. The nice thing about it though is that the stuff that the images are generated are completely original. And here's the thing if Jeff Koons can uh, exploit or uh, <laughs> pay a bunch of people to do his work, why can't I use AI to help me build my work? I mean, you think, okay, he works digitally. He just types something in and boom, it does the work for him. It does a piece of the work for me. It helps me, it's an aid. It doesn't do the work for me completely. You get me? What my work is generally about though, it's very cerebral, very internal, so, you know, somewhat esoteric. Uh, my sort of views of the world, but I don't know, from a more abstract kind of uh, angle. What this work here is about, uh, is actually, yeah, kind of a self-portrait of sorts, internalized mirror image. It's called Between Minds. Between Minds about uh, my, like, the, my future, and Between Minds about uh, you know, my present, basically. Um, how to proceed from here. Um, and basically how, uh, yeah, how I see myself through the eyes, lens of others. So actually, in this piece, you'll see a uh, travel house on legs, walking, moving. Not necessarily moving into the future, although it has this futuristic feel, maybe like Star Wars, the attack walker or whatever. Um, but it's this whole thing also with um, not being static, you know, you're just moving with the times. Where do I see myself in the future, though, as an artist or even as a person? Uh, hopefully in a, a world that is, you know, um, improving. Although, <laughs> That's my thoughts on that. Um, but honestly, I, I feel very encouraged, I'd say, by the art that's being uh, made in Barbados uh, now more than before. Uh, a lot more open minds, that's the thing. Uh, I like to see that. Um, you know, it's a good reflection on, on where we may be going. You know? My name is Catherine Kennedy. I'm a Barbadian visual artist and writer. And the two pieces I am showing in Future Forward are called Enmeshment and Plexus. So these are two video pieces, both of which I completed during 2020 and 2021, kind of in the height of the lockdown and all of the, um, the difficult situations that people were dealing with around COVID. And while my work generally speaks about relationships between people, their bodies and the environment, I think during, during COVID, I began to think a lot more about people's mental states as well and how that was affecting, um, how that was affecting our daily life and how that was affecting our experience of constriction and being at home and kind of lacking autonomy. So on the one hand, both pieces are speaking about the kind of contentious relationship we have with our environment as being from the Caribbean, being kind of um, at the mercy of a touristic gaze and that kind of difficult relationship between depending on such a beautiful paradise image but the kind of negative impacts that has on us. And then that was kind of coupled with and layered with this sense of restriction within our own bodies, within our own sense of being able to move. So both pieces um, have this kind of eerie quality to them, they both have um, elements of yes beauty with the shells and the beads um, and the environment but then there's also this kind of sinister sense of these webs that are entrapping us and um, that we really need to kind of reckon with within ourselves and with our wider society. Is that okay? My name is Aaron Trotman and before I talk about the piece I just want to premise by saying I don't like to put inherent values or meanings on my drawings, I think it cages it too much. Instead, I like to provide what was going through my head or my thought process while producing the piece. Um, for this drawing specifically, I was thinking more of the identity of a black lady. As you can see, 
I went with the abstract way of defining the hair in this drawing because um, I see the hair of a black lady as her identity. And as I think we all can agree, the identity of a black woman is very complex and complicated. So in the drawing, the hair is the only place I went to. Like, I generally freed myself because I wanted to create an image, a confusing image as the confusing image of the black lady is. Um, as you can see, there's stars, or there isn't stars. In my head, I was thinking about stars when I was abstracting her hair. I was thinking about space, I was thinking about the cosmos, I was thinking about the most beautiful things that I look at, and it's generally the night sky. So in my pieces, I did a series like this, and in the pieces, um, there's some reference to the night sky, some reference to stars, some reference to splatter. Um, Alright, that's about it for the piece, but as I said, that was just my idea. I provide my idea so you can like have a reference of what to create the drawing in your head. So when you look at the drawing, I just want you to um, imagine it as you will, well considering my thought process. Thanks. My name is Rivenus. I'm the creator of Discordia, uh, an online webcomic. What you see behind me is the first volume printed. The comic is a very surreal fantasy Alice in Wonderland type tale. It follows uh, a young man as he finds himself kind of stuck in the background of reality. It's hard to explain, but once you, once you explore the visuals and kind of follow the story, you find yourself lost in the trippy landscape of my crazy imagination. Um, there are lots of other characters that become important. There's lots of stories. It's a, a gigantic world where I'm like, really focusing on the world building, creating something the, uh, on the scale of something like Lord of the Rings. So that's basically it. Um, it's still ongoing, but for right now, you can, check, you can read it online for free. Um, if anything intrigued you, you should check it out at discordiacomic.com or you can come down here and purchase the first volume as well. This story is something that I created in a sense to be my own personal way of interpreting and perceiving reality so that I thought all, basically all art is that. It's like filtering your specific vision of reality to the world. So it's kind of like my way of philosophizing and seeing what, like turning, overturning rocks, philosophical rocks, so you can try and see, understand the world, the world we all live in, that everyone's trying to understand, everyone's trying to find their own path in life. And this is kind of my way of representing that in sort of um, an allegorical sense. Hi, my name is Evan McDonald, and this is my piece, Pride and Industry. Um, this was sort of my attempt at the age of 18 when I started it um, to sort of make a political statement. It was submitting to an exhibition space that I knew had a sort of reputation for being a bit um, classist and having some, you could say, racist undertones. So this was my way of kind of challenging the system, you could say. Um, so what I did is that I took these two women and I made them sort of supernatural forces, sort of symbols of like Barbadian pride and nationalism. So we used the dolphin as well as the um, pelican from the motto. The motto the, the God of Arms, right? And those are my um, those are my objects that I would have taken inspiration from. Used different iconography such as the bus stop. And then I wanted to create a sort of galaxy type of environment to add to like an idea of futurism or again the otherworldly type of environment. Um, so the pelican, for the most part, was sort of a representation of flight. So she would represent sort of like the air, um, the, the sky, etc. And of course the dolphin would represent more so the water. So sort of like an ocean-like character, you could say. Um, one of the things that's also an ongoing trend with me is my use of historic um, iconographies as well as, as well as mentions to colorism, classism, etc. Um, for me, those are sort of integral to any art that I would do that would reflect um, Barbadian history. 
So for me, history is a big deal. Um, I'm a tour guide. I've done work and volunteer stuff at the museum. I have an overall love for history. And with understanding history comes understanding things like classism, colorism, racism, and how they really are like a, like a fundamental part of how we function as a society. There's no real way to separate our identities from these problems. So that's something I'm also interested in exploring in my work as well.